Thank you for joining us and welcome to Open Infra Live, the Open Infra Foundation's hour long interactive show sharing production case studies, open source demos, industry conversations, and the latest updates from the global open infrastructure community. We are live here most Thursdays at 14 UTC, streaming on YouTube and LinkedIn. My name is Kendall Nelson. I am a senior upstream developer advocate at the Open Infrastructure Foundation, and I'll be your host for today. So as we mentioned, or I mentioned, <laughs> we're streaming live and we'll be saving time at the end of the episode for questions that you might have throughout the episode as we um, introduce all of our excellent speakers today. So if you have questions, please drop them in the comments section throughout the show, wherever you happen to be watching us, and we will answer as many as we can. So today is all about Antelope, the 27th release of OpenStack. We're back at the start of the alphabet. It's crazy to think that we've, you know, had 26 on-time releases and now we're back where we started. Um, but as always, we couldn't have accomplished this without the help of our member companies and our worldwide community. And as a result, we have an excellent lineup today of community members here, many from our member companies, to talk to you about some of the new features and fixes that have just been released yesterday as a part of the 2023.1 Antelope release. First up, we have Sylvan here to talk about updates to Nova. Hey Kendall, thanks. Uh, so hello, I'm Sylvain, I'm the Nova PTL, also the placement PTL because now placement is in the Nova, is uh, is also using the, 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 the Nova team. So basically let's discuss first about what we did for Antelope and then we'll discuss uh, for, 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 the next, uh, for the next release. So basically, can I have the, the, next, the next slide please? Yeah, okay. So, so basically, what we did for Antelope, or Antelope, I don't know what we prefer. So basically, um, we have six uh, specs or six blueprints that were merged. Uh, 18 were accepted before. To be honest, uh, we only had six, not because basically we did not have time to, to review them, but more because I would say, uh, some priorities were different in between in between the contributors, so that's why uh, that's why unfortunately we didn't have time to to merge more of them. So about bugs, um, 27 uh, bug fix merge, maybe more. I just try to to think about all the I, I would say all the changes that that were merged for the bugs. Um, also, one important bug fix uh, was also merged. It was about some C, some CF, some CVE uh, bug that we had. If you don't really know about uh, that CVE, please look at that or please ask us, um, and then you will see. Uh, make sure that you can have a fix if you have this CVE. Uh, that being said, for Nova, uh, that fix is only upstream for stable usury. But when I discussed with most of, I would say, the with most of the people that create uh, some specific products, I think they should be okay to to have the fix for for for, for their own products. We have we had less uh, number of contributors as you see than last uh, that last cycle. Last cycle we were I think uh, see, I think 50, 56. Um, so that's maybe something we could be discussing on next virtual PTG. I will explain that uh, after. But anyway, thanks thanks the team, thanks the Nova team for working. I know it's something it's something difficult to work on both, I would say, the project and other stuff that you have. So I'm definitely fine. I'm definitely happy to see you. Um, as, a, as one thing also that operators also need to know, um, this is our first what we name slurp release, which means that at the moment, given is the first slurp release, um, you can roll upgrade your compute uh, services directly from Yoga. That means that, for example, you can upgrade 
uh, you can upgrade your um, your services to Antelope. But you can continue to have Yoga computes, and that should work. And I say that should work because we tested that works, but it's more like an experimental fix, uh, feature. So please test it. Anyway, we'll discuss about slurp releases maybe later. Next slide, please. So what we actually had for Antelope was uh, at different features. One is at least nothing is really changing, I would say, for PCI devices, but no. Uh, I mean, the use cases are still the same, but no, the scheduler and place, the placement API no verify the, PC, the PCI devices, which is no better because um, we had a few, I would say, we had a few problems uh, with the with the previous PCI device scheduling, and no given given that new given that that new feature it will help us to only for example to also to not only sorry um having more allocations i would say sorry about that if you don't really know what an allocation is but also to uh basically have new features for pci devices one also uh, feature that uh, we created is how to power manage the dedicated, the dedicated CPUs, meaning that if you have dedicated CPUs, now with Antelope, you can either ask Nova to stop the CPU. For example, when the instance is uh, either deleted or stopped, then basically the CPUs, the the physical CPUs that are used uh, for that instance will then be stopped as well. Or you can, I would say, modify the power for those CPUs. That's a new thing that we that we supported by Antelope. As a reminder, that also that only works for dedicated CPUs. Uh, another um, another feature that we got is uh, making sure that, for example, when you rename, a, uh, we, we don't support we don't support renaming a, a, a compute uh, a compute service. But even that, some some uh, I mean, even if we don't support that, sometimes it happens. Basically, it happens that the computes are are renamed, and then you have problems. So what we created is uh, we created a feature that basically verifies the uh, specific compute node UID that's persisted. And if it changes, then we say, sorry, it won't work. Because if we then start the compute, then you will have more problems. Um, another feature is that, uh, for example, for space consoles, now you have new compression settings. Uh, one important also feature that was accepted for uh, for Antelope and that was done is that by default we enable the new uh, roles uh, and the new policies. That means that for you it is not only about admins and end users. This is more. Um, I mean, you, you will see the new policies. I won't explain that by now. And two other features. One was about for example, you can you can provide an instance host name as a FQDN if you use the that specific micro version I saw I, I said. And the last one is about, for example, now that you evacuate an instance, it won't automatically restart your instance. We did that because sometimes operators prefer to not automatically restart the instance because, for example, they they have other services to run before the instance uh, uh, has, to, has to run itself. So we prefer to, to stop that using that specific micro version. Next slide, please. So um, now that they discussed about the Antelope uh, features, as a reminder, next week, we'll have a virtual PTG. Nova, the Nova team uh, will be uh, discussing during that virtual PTG. I provided an email. 
um, on the mailing list, you can see it. But uh, again, I will explain that now. So if you want to discuss with the Nova contributors, who are more happy, who are more than happy to discuss with you all. For example, if you want to discuss about your bugs, the the I would say the use cases that you have, or the features that you miss, that's one way. That's one simple way. Just go and discuss with us. You will see we have multiple topics to discuss. The topics are at the left, but you have also a specific operator hour where uh, you can basically uh, go and discuss with us. So as a reminder, this is uh, on next Tuesday at 3 p.m. UTC. I'm, I'm, as, I, as I remember, don't, I mean, as I remember for, for Europe, we will have daylight uh, modifications next weekend. So keep, in, keep that in mind, but yeah, 3 p.m. UTC next Tuesday, you will uh, you will be able to go and discuss with the Nova community. I think that's basically it for me. Thanks all. Thank you so much for sharing all of those updates and uh, telling us all about the hardware enablement and all the bug fixes. We really appreciate everything that you and Nova does for OpenStack. So thank you so much. Um, if anybody in the audience has questions, please make sure to drop them in the comment section of wherever you're watching this, and we'll make sure to get to them at the end. Um, next up, we have Carlos De Silva, Barcelona, <laughs> um, <laughs> to talk about Manila. Thanks, Keno. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Carlos, uh, the OpenStack Manila PTL. And I would like to share with you today some of the great things that happened uh, in Manila during the Antelope release cycle, but also share some of the good things that we intend to do for the Bobcat cycle. Um, first, congratulations to everyone uh, for uh, this amazing release. I think it's, it's great to see all of the work coming together. So yeah, uh, let's get started with some of the good things we've done. So what's new in 2023.1 or also known as Antelope. Uh, the first of the, uh, one of the major features we have uh, worked on during this release is the shared transfers. And uh, it is already available for this release. Uh, you can use it for transferring shares between projects. Uh, the behavior and purpose is quite like Cinder's and you can start a transfer of a share from one project to another and then accept the shared transfer in the destination process. Uh, project. There is some more documentation related to it uh, and how to use this feature. And it is available only if you are using GHSS Pulse. And there are also some more discussions happening uh, over the uh, next PTG, uh, which is, is going to be next week, the virtual PTG, where we intend to talk about some enhancements for it and possibly extending it for GHSS True as well. So, yeah, uh, if you're interested on that, please uh, join us at the PTG. Uh, the next big thing uh, I would like to talk about is the uh, metadata for Shen Network subnets. And uh, basically, let, let's put it away. Like if you have a deployment and it's using, for example, NetApp, and it has a network layer that does not provide the traditional segmentation details uh, out of the Neutron API, with this release, you have the ability to let Manila know about those details. So uh, you can set the metadata to the Shen Network subnet and that will be read during the network configuration process for share servers. So when you're cre uh, creating shares and you would like uh, like the backend to know about some specific networking details, you can do that through uh, the share network subnet metadata. Um, when uh, another uh, feature uh, introduced was uh, in case you're using CIFS in your deployment and you missed adding a default Active Directory site to your security services, you, we got you covered. So now uh, you would be able to have a default AD site and add it to a secure, to a secure service while you're creating it or when uh, you are updating it in case uh, it doesn't have like shared servers. Um, on the, the next big things, like the uh, in the next slide, uh, we'll see that uh, we had also some RBAC updates. Uh, basically, the RBAC updates for this release consist of like ensuring that we have 
enough testing coverage and that uh, all of the uh, things that we have been implemented implementing uh, for the role-based uh, role based access control uh, are working just fine. So uh, one of the things that uh, we like about the uh, doing these things with, uh, with the Manila community is that we are able to promote some events where we basically like try to have all of the contributors coming together. And uh, for this cycle, we had a hackathon where we uh, had lots of contributors from different affiliations uh, focused for like a couple of days, just trying to write more test cases or in uh, enhancing testing coverage for uh, our back. So we, we had like lots of new test cases and new test scenarios. Uh, merged, uh, like in, in the functional test for Manila. And uh, this is one uh, like an amazing work. We couldn't be happier with the outcome for this. So uh, for the next cycle, we also intend to have uh, a couple uh, of more of those events coming. Uh, yeah, so th that's uh, also something that we will be discussing at the PTG. So yeah, uh, if you are interested, uh, and you would like to know more about that or uh, have some thoughts about it, please join us. And also we had several bug fixes and enhancements uh, to the features we have. And we also have like some good plans for the 2023.2 uh, release, which is Bobcat. And for 2023.2, we uh, intend to introduce share backups for Manila. Uh, it would, uh, be a kind of a generic backup approach for Manila shares. And uh, we you would be able to either like use uh, the generic backup approach, which uh, is like uh, using the Manila data service as like there's the generic migra share migration approach. But also uh, if like you are using a third party driver vendor uh, and if, they implement this feature, you would be able to use like the native feature from the uh, from their storage. So yeah, uh, that's uh, one of the nice things we intend to merge as well. Uh, the specification for this was simply uh, was accepted during the uh, envelope cycle. And now we are quite focusing on the uh, on the implementation for this. Also, uh, we want to add the possibility to specify metadata for share export locations, which is like we have been gradually uh, adding metadata to our resources according to the need. Uh, we've been changing the uh, meta, uh, setting metadata mechanism and APIs so we can, could make it more generic. So it's a couple of cycles effort already. And for this cycle, we want to extend it for share uh, export locations as well. This is one of the projects that we, uh, are proposing to outreachy, so we want to have an outreach intern working on this. So if you are an outreachy applicant, or if you know uh, an applicant that is interested in working like on a uh, nice feature to work on with uh, great mentors in a great community, uh, please let them know about this or uh, please get in touch with us. And also a couple more things like introducing more coverage to the Manila APIs in OpenStack SDK so we can have more uh, interaction with uh, other projects and uh, we can make those APIs available. Um, CI stability and different approaches for scenario testing is also something we, we are discussing now. So next week we will have a couple of topics uh, where we'll talk about this. And yeah, as I said, uh, this, uh, plans for, uh, for Bobcat are being discussed during the next week's Virtual PTG. So if you're an operator, a contributor, and you're interested in one of these, please join us. The sessions, time slots, and the topic, uh, either pads already available in the PTG page, which everyone is sharing at this point. So yeah, uh, please check it out and uh, join us uh, next week. So yeah, that's pretty much it for Manila Updates. Awesome, thank you. It was it's really cool hearing about how you had the the focused hackathon day um, dedicated to our back. I I think that that's a really good way to make progress on the community goal. So maybe something other projects can try for Bobcat as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and next up, we are going to dive into what Cinder accomplished during the Antelope cycle. And with us today to talk about Cinder is Rajat. Thanks, Kendall. Yeah, so I am Rajat Daspara. Uh, I'm Cinder PTL, and I'm going to discuss a few updates about Cinder. So, 
Yeah. So what's new? So we have three new uh, volume backend drivers added. One is the HP XP1, which provides support for both iSCSI and Fiber Channel Protocol. We have two uh, drivers that support NVMe with TCP. So it's great to see like new drivers adopting new technologies, and we have more and more NVMe drivers, which is really good for the project. Uh, apart from that, we added uh, the missing commands, which were there in OpenStack client. So we had this uh, parity between Cinder client and OpenStack client, where few of the commands uh, were missing from OpenStack client. So we added eight new commands in the last cycle, and now all the commands that Cinder client support, uh, OpenStack client also supports. Uh, one of the future work we have for the next cycle is the OpenStack SDK support which we will be discussing in the Bobcat cycle. But for now, uh, you can use OpenStack CLI for all Cinder operations. Uh, next slide, please. So what's changed? So we have removed uh, support for creating multi-attached volumes in the legacy way. So just to briefly explain, uh, in Queen's release, we supported creating multi-attached volumes, but the way was a non-admin user could specify the multi-attached parameter in the volume create request, uh, which we soon realized was not a very good idea because uh, non-admins could create multi-attached volumes and could cause data corruption with, without uh, having the right file system set there. So we delegated that task to an admin user. So an admin user now creates a multi-attached volume type and a non-admin user uses that type to create the volume. Uh, so we still supported the legacy way of doing it, but recently there were a lot of uh, customers having issues uh, with the legacy way. So we, in the cycle, we finally removed it. If there are any deployments using the legacy way of creating multi-attached volume, please switch to the new way as we don't support it uh, after Antelope. Another thing was uh, one major issue we had when we restored backups into thin volumes. So whenever we restored a backup into a thin volume, it got converted into a thick one, which was really bad because it caused more space consumption. But now that is finally fixed. And if you restore a backup to a thin volume, a newly created thin volume, then it would preserve the sparseness of it. Uh, next slide, please. OK, so what's fixed? So we had a CVE. Uh, Silvan also mentioned the same CVE. So I will just briefly describe what, what that is, so just to get the context. So if we have a VMDK image file, uh, we can inject the host controller host uh, configuration files path into it. And when we do the conversion then to a raw file, then we can fetch the config data from that raw file. So it was an attack vector which we had in VMDK files. It doesn't matter if you're using a VMware driver or not. Any VMDK file could be exploited in the same way. So VMDK has subformats. So we have two subformats that we support that uh, don't cause this vulnerability. So uh, they are listed on the screen, stream optimized and monolithic sparse. So these are the only two subformats we support with VMDK. Other formats we reject as of now. Uh, we have a config option to set it, but uh, to fix the CVE, we uh, had to limit the number of subformats we support. This uh, change is backported until train. So we have already uh, released all the stable branches containing this fix, uh, but we backported it train because train supported Python 2.7. And I know some of our deployments have old uh, supporting old versions. So we have the fix in train. So if you want to fix your deployment and uh, since we are not releasing train, you could take a look at that and uh, do the required changes to fix it in your deployment. Uh, next slide, please. So we have some stacks, uh, stats from Stack Lytics. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see on the screen, we have 70 contributors uh, for reviews, 47 for commits, 53 for which filed bugs, and 11 which resolve the bugs. So out of 150 bugs were resolved, which is a good number, we had good amount of commits and reviews. It is not as good as the last release. Last release, we had higher stats. But again, uh, it's still a good number. So yeah, I'm really proud that we have very active contribution in our project. And 
moving to the last slide uh, we have bobcat ptg upcoming so these are the dates for sender we are conducted from 28 to 31st march which is tuesday to friday the timings are 1300 to 1700 utc you can find in the ptg schedule i have booked the cactus room for uh, all the days from tuesday to friday uh, we also have operator hours so any operators who are interested you can join us on 29th march wednesday from 1400 to 1500 utc it would be great to have you there and finally we have this contribution guide uh, if you want to contribute to sender you can go to this link yeah awesome thank you so much for sharing all of that i'm really excited to see the openstack client getting parity and the sdk being your focus and the next release uh it's been a long time coming trying to get all of the services to parity so we really appreciate all of the effort um you and and cinder have made towards that goal awesome cool surely thanks Kendra. <laughs> thank you all right um so our last presenter for today will be talking about the updates in ironic during the antelope release take it away jay hey so uh Thanks for coming and watching, and uh, just going to talk a little bit about what we've gotten done over the course of the Antelope release with Ironic. Um, we're going to start out by talking a little bit about some of the numbers that talk about what we did, and uh, part of the point of this is Ironic's a, a pretty big collection of projects. It's not just the one Ironic service. We provide a whole suite of things that can help you deploy bare metal or test it or, or whatever, and across all those projects we had... 251 commits from 53 different people, over 23 different companies contributing um, for over 25,000 uh, 25, lines changed across 22 repositories. We also fixed two CVEs that were in uh, CI tooling that we use, so I'm not going to go too much into detail for it. If you're running virtual BMC and Sushi Tools in production, you should stop anyway because it's a CI tool. Um, and I did want to mention... Uh, we adopted a project this cycle as well. Um, some good folks who are kind of uh, in the community or adjacent to the Ironic community have been maintaining virtual PDU, which emulates a PDU on one side and uh, powers on libvirt VMs on the other side. And it's a great CI tool on the same lines as virtual BMC and Sushi tools, and we've adopted it now. So that's now a part of Ironic, and it's being maintained by us. So. Uh, if you're watching this even if you don't use ironic if you're working on another bare metal software come talk to us about our ci tool and we've got some good stuff there but uh let's move on to talking about what we did last cycle in 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 actual detail that you care about and and part of the reason i show the numbers before is that a lot of the work we continue to do on ironic is stability work it's ci making sure that things stay stable and tested and behind the scenes things you might not always uh care about right now. But here, here's some of the things that you can see. Um, one of the big things we we added is the ability to export ironic conductor metrics to Prometheus. So we used, uh, we, <laughs> we already supported sending hardware based metrics to Prometheus about the hardware that ironics managing. And we supported sending application metrics from the conductor and the API into stats D. What we've done is we've sort of mashed those together now. So you're able to send the um, the application metrics from Ironic Conductor about the performance of Ironic services to Prometheus alongside all that hardware information, which hopefully that's going to make that a lot more useful. I will note that we're not currently sending application metrics from API, just uh, it it's a, was a technical issue and... Um, you should be able to metric everything on the conductor that you would care about as our APIs are pretty thin. Um, in addition to that, kind of on the um, on the route of operability, we've added support for service role in our default policy. Um, it's intended to be for service to service communication. And what we've uh, what we've done here is is basically finished up our feature support for RBAC. So ironic should support all the roles you would expect. And you can configure that. Uh, so we might do more testing in the future. But as far as features, they're there. It exists. And you should be able to, to use RBAC in your Ironic environment um, fully, including the, the service role. 
Um, the third thing is, is this is more of a preview. We actually did add a feature in Ironic, and I'll talk about that. But this is uh, one of those features that I don't expect to be immediately be useful to y'all, but it enables us to do better things in the future. And that's uh, adding support for shard to our Node API endpoint. This permits an operator to set a shard value on a node and then later to query just a subset of nodes by using shard in the query string. The reason this is valuable is a lot of times uh, many of the services that integrate with Ironic, such as some of the networking agents we work with and even the Nova Compute service directly, um, have sort of a scaling bar that set it about as high as you could scale up a single virtual hypervisor. But because Ironic is dealing in real bare metal, we um, we could scale much higher than that in a single Ironic installation, but we can't always expect everything around us to uh, to sort of adapt to to the specialties of bare metal. So what we've done is, is allowed you to chop those up and then we'll be working on a feature in Bobcat, uh, maybe further on as well, to add support for those various extra tools, the Nova Compute driver, some of our networking agents, to be shard aware so that you can limit them to a subset of your nodes. And that's going to greatly increase performance. And uh, our hope is that by the time this entire process is done, that the um, the ironic driver in Nova will look and act a lot more like the other drivers, which should lead to fewer bugs and a more easily understandable high availability model for people who are already familiar with how Nova works with virtual machines. Um, so that's really exciting, but we're only a step there. I've got one more thing on there though that's uh, pretty cool, which is uh, as part of this, you know, you can sort of see we're trying to increase performance to the API. Well. Last cycle, we with nodes, we took an approach and we greatly improved the API response time for those. This cycle, it was the port and the port group APIs. And um, I say on this slide, it's 20 times faster. We have benchmarks that are higher than that. I wanted to be safe and say 20 times that I can feel pretty confident you're going to get a 20 times benefit in your environment. But in the real world, you're likely to see even better performance gains than this. And so we're, we're happy to provide that performance gain and I uh, hope it makes your environments run more cleanly as you upgrade through. So uh, that's it for our features. Now, I did want to mention that we also are having a virtual project teams gathering here um, Tuesday and Wednesday, although we do have two different sessions for Wednesday. Um, for two different, you know, for our um, North America and Europe contributors versus APAC. Um, that'll be in the Folsom room at the same PTG website. All the other ones are listed. Um, we're planning features for, for Bobcat. And I've got the Etherpad schedule up, the, the Etherpad up with the schedule in it and some of the comments. Um, one of the things that we can struggle with sometimes in these events is having real good concrete feedback from operators. So if you're running a relatively modern ironic you know feel free to come by and talk to us about what features you're using what's working the way you like what's not um but even more especially we have a um next slide we have a um a session set up just for you and that's a special um edition of the bare metal sig um is going to be our operator hour at the ptg and this is specifically for anyone who's operating bare metal provisioning software doesn't have to be OpenStack Ironic or Ironic adjacent. You know, if you're using Metal 3 that has Ironic, if you're using Mass, if you're using any bare metal provisioning, come to our operator hour. Let's commiserate. We have similar problems. We have similar use cases, and we all want to talk about it. Um, so I want to have you there with us and chatting. That's going to be Wednesday morning at 1300. Well, I say morning because of where I am in the world. It might be an afternoon or an evening for you, but... Wednesday at 1300 UTC in Folsom. And we really do encourage you, come to the Bare Metal SIG, come talk to us. That'll be a great place to give your feedback to us. And uh, and hey, I just, if you're running the software, I think we'd all love to meet you anyway. So thanks for, thanks for listening. Awesome. Thank you for all those updates and all the invites and stuff. Uh, the, the detail behind everything is just so cool. I feel like there's, something new that I learn about ironic anytime I hear somebody talk about it. So, um, very, very cool. All right. Well, I would like to invite everybody to come back on screen 
and um, see if we have any questions from the audience. I haven't seen any come in yet exactly, but um, I know I have a, a, like one or two questions for you all. So um, we're still waiting on Sylvan and... Um, oh, hey. <laughs> Perfect. We've got the whole group. Okay. So um, I have two questions that are, are kind of unrelated to one another. So the first one. So obviously the virtual PTG is next week, but we are also having an in-person PTG at the same time that we'll be hosting the Open Infra Summit in Vancouver. And I was wondering how many of your teams are planning on RSVPing and signing up to meet in person. Um, I'm happy to start and speak for Ironic. Um, I know that uh, we do have some contributors who are going to be there. I will be there. Um, I know some others. I don't necessarily think we're going to end up having a quorum for making decision making decisions in person. Um, due to we just have such a distributed team, so there probably will still be a virtual element, but I always do appreciate the in-person sessions and getting to meet people face-to-face, -face. and that can be especially helpful for cross-project things. So, I mean, I talked earlier about getting sharding implemented and some of the other things that integrate with Ironic. I suspect that that in-person PTG will be a huge help if we hit any speed bumps along that implementation path and helping it out. So, um, that's sort of our approach. I don't think that's that might not be our primary planning this year for Ironic because everyone's not going to be there in person. But I still would love to have you there. Would love to meet you if you're running Ironic. You know, come by, say hello, even if it's not in an official session. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to to continue on that on that on that point. I mean, for us, it will be probably the same. We won't have we won't have Chrome because because uh, because I mean, not everyone can just travel. Um, but uh, we started to discuss about it. Uh, we'll continue to discuss it during the virtual PTG from the Nova point of view. But uh, the first thoughts that we have as a team is basically to at least have time to do this kind of, I would say, discussions, topic discussions, exactly like we do for virtual PTGs. You know, in general, we don't really accept, we don't really need a, to have a consensus during a virtual PTG. This is more time for having a kind of a direction. And I, I think for the, for the physical PTG, that will be quite the same. Uh, that will help people that are there to be able to, to find some, some discussions and to have like some directions to, to have. That's the first thing. I also, as say, as Jay say, um, for example, about the CI, I have some some concerns about the upstream CI, and if we can work as a team, as an OpenStack team, in between the pro in between multiple projects, about, for example, say the, the issues we know about the CI, that would be loved. That would be loved from my point of view. That plus also, I know that in general, it's difficult for operators to, to attend uh, PTGs. But given this time, uh, we'll have both the forum, the summit, and the PTG. I think it's very important uh, for engage with the operators. And like maybe have one day in between the operators and us to, to look about about their pain points and maybe look at the code, maybe look at something, maybe look at some bug fixes. I, I mean, I don't know, but that would be also nice. That's maybe like the three main priorities I would have to, I, I would like to have for the, for the, for the physical PTG. Yeah. Yep. Uh, in, in the Manila case, we also intend to be there. Uh, we intend to have some sessions. Uh, for this PTG, and uh, we we thought about this as the uh, other two. Like, uh, we might not have like quorum to take the decisions there, but the thing is, we will we intend to combine this virtually as well, and we think that this could be a good timing as well to meet the operators and to uh, listen to them. So those would be like some of the focus we we intend to have. Uh, we know there are a couple of uh, Manila people coming. And uh, it will be, uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, see people in person and to meet and yeah, so. Definitely. 
So from a central perspective, uh, some of the people are really interested in going. They still haven't confirmed their status, but yeah. Uh, apart from the core center team also, we have storage vendors like NetApp and Pure uh, who are also going to be there. So uh, in Cinder, we have this mid cycles in between the releases. So we do two mid cycles. So I was planning we could do something like a mid cycle one there and conduct some discussions, uh, but it depends on the number of people. But yeah, we have interested people uh, going to Venco. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of good opportunities to mix with operators and see new faces that we probably haven't seen because we've only had one other in-person event as a community since the pandemic. So getting teams back together and rebuilding trust and like, you know, being able to look at each other and not through a computer will be so good. I'm so excited. I hope to see you all there. Um, and make sure to get your team signed up by April 2nd. So after, right after the PTG is the deadline. Um, any other teams not uh, represented in our panel today are also invited. Um, and yeah, we, we hope to see you all there in person at the, the Vancouver Summit. So um, I think we still have time for some more questions. Let's see if we have any. Da, da, da. I don't see any from the audience. So get your questions in. Um, and if we don't get to them by the end of the episode, we can definitely um, circle back and uh, uh, answer them on, on mailing lists and uh, other ways of communicating as well, just to make sure that um, Everybody knows everything about what happened in Antelope. Um, so my other question was, um, if there is one thing in particular you would like feedback on from Antelope at the Vancouver Summit and during the forum, what would that one feature be? It's a hard question, probably. <laughs> Uh, we only have one. Uh, we only have one question for the operators, mm -hmm. uh, for for the for the operator hour that we'll have on the virtual PTG. But I guess we'll ask the same. Uh, we'll have the same for uh, for Vancouver. Um, so for uh, for us for Nova, we started to have unified limits. We started to implement unified limits. Basically, what is unified limits is that uh, with Keystone, you can provide some some limits and then basically Nova verifies that instead of having the quotas that um, that we are probably uh, poss uh, previously having. So that was one question. Uh, that's one open question that was for operators. We, we said two cycles before that people can start to can start to use it. But we will know. We know it takes time for operators to get the the latest releases. But given it was like I have to remember exactly in which specific release we we had unified limits. I think no. I think we have a few operators that can start to to test it. That's one of the things I would like to 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 engage with uh, with the operators. One, I mean. Well, worse, what we also did at the Berlin summit um, during the forum, and that uh, I would also want to, to have that uh, during the forum in Vancouver, is to engage with them with their pain points. That's what, in general, we do. And what we did uh, with Berlin is that they said us their pain points, and after the after the forum, we tried to to see whether we had, we were having some specific bug reports that were related to our pain points, because in general, some are there, some are not. So if we are not if we are not seeing an existing bug report, then we are creating it, and we try to fix them after that. So uh, I hope that if we can continue to do it this way, that that will probably help our operators better than just uh, waiting for them to to test. Awesome. Who else? For Ironic, it's interesting, right? I don't necessarily have a specific question I'd like to ask for operators, but what I've been seeing is I've been going out to conferences and talking to people in the OpenStack and the Kubernetes communities is that there's a lot of people running Ironic who don't even realize it. People <laughs> who are using things like Metal Cubed who don't know that Ironic is underpinning it. 
people who might be using a vendor branded product that's powered by ironic under the hood. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's less about what I specifically want to ask these operators and more about bringing more of them under, under the roof here, right? Like we, mm -hmm. we're here to support them. We don't care how you consume ironic. Um, if you use it as part of the OpenStack integrated release, if you use it bolted onto some other thing, you know, we, we want to hear about you. We want to hear about those use cases because that's going to help us determine what things to focus on as we move forward. So like, yeah. um, that's, that's what I, that's what I sort of think about when I think of what I want to hear from operators is I want to grab those operators who don't necessarily know that they're running OpenStack and say, <laughs> yes, you are welcome to OpenStack. Congratulations. This is what your, your stuff's been running on a while. <laughs> and then also to, to see what they like, what they dislike about it and, and either, you know, take that feedback in to improve us or, or maybe even talk to one of our partners in another yeah. community and help them integrate with us better to help resolve those operator issues. Yeah. To all of you that think OpenStack is dead. <laughs> You've been using it all the time. You just didn't know. <laughs> I had more than one of those conversations at uh, the Southern California Linux Expo a couple oh, weeks yeah. ago. Literally that whole thing of someone talking about how, why would they use OpenStack for server provisioning that they use Metal 3? Yeah. <laughs> and then I get to, to tell them all about how ironic is actually what they're using That's under awesome. the hood there, which is... Uh, exciting and sad at the same time. So I hope we get more folks to realize what uh, what's actually running in the substrate that their environments are built on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of visibility that can be gained, I think. Awesome. Yeah, uh, uh, I think we, uh, we would possibly focus on uh, listening to the operators as well. Uh, we have taken like approaches like where we would ask, ask questions during like previous uh, operator hours we have been working on enhancing uh, those pain points but uh, I think we would be more likely be focusing on listening to what uh, they have to say and trying to come up with uh, solutions or, or trying to uh, listen about the deployments that are using Manila so that's pretty much what we would be focusing on okay awesome so we have this user survey feedback every year and in every ptg like when that falls aligns with that we ask uh, people like so the responses are pretty vague uh, they say backup needs improvement or uh, volume create needs to be fast or something like that but they are very vague questions so i would really like to ask them like uh, a proper details like how what is the problem exactly and how we can tackle that issue so yeah just few questions from the survey feedback. Uh, awesome. Yeah. If, if I can add one last thing um, about um, what I would like to discuss with the operators. For me, it's important to remind them that the community is not only the developers, but that's also the operators. And nothing can happen if they don't report us what the problems that they have. So that's one important thing. We know that we have Launchpad for providing the bugs. Um, we know that sometimes they, uh, sometimes some operators try to fix their own problems by themselves. But I would like to explain that whatever happens, the community is there. And engaging with the community can also help them more better than they think. It's not only discussing like every six months or every one year. It's more like trying to find a way to, and we, we started to discuss that in Berlin, but we didn't have time, trying to find a way to, to, to have those kind of productive discussions, not yearly, but I would say weekly. And that's that's one of I understand that not everyone can can work on uh, on a project for for the world for the world week. That is totally understandable. But if we can have a way for the operators to know what Nova works at the moment and a way for them to report the their problems that they have, that would be awesome. Yeah. So basically across all of the, the projects are presented here. And I'm sure all of the projects in general, more feedback from operators. And it doesn't have to be on Antelope either. Cause I know like we've talked about, it's not easy to upgrade right away when the new release comes out. So um, 
any feedback on any release really to make sure that the the issues that operators and users are hitting are being addressed um because if we don't know about them we can't fix them we can't make your experience better so um formal invitation for all users and operators please get involved you are a part of the community just as much as any developer um you're using the software and interacting with it every day. So we want to make it a better experience for you. Um, so it looks like we did get one question from the audience. Yay. <laughs> um, and it is for Jay, I believe. Um, so uh, persistent coherent memory models, an example of CXL, uh, have the potential to radically simplify and optimize virtualization stacks, even when running on legacy hardware. Any thoughts or work towards this? So I, I don't have specific knowledge of this, to be clear. Um, I, I was one of the track chairs for hardware enablement, and I can tell you we definitely got talks submitted about CXL. Um, I, I don't know of any specific movement happening in that direction. But this is the sort of thing where, you know, your voice needs to be heard, right? Like if I had heard this question before going through some of the hardware enablement talks, I might would have been more apt to pick one of those talks to make it or things like that. I, I honestly don't remember if we picked any of them through. But, you know, that is that is something that's likely only going to happen if people show interest in an open source based solution to something like that. No, no, no. I was just, uh, I was just going to the same direction. They say um, we. I think we discussed about CXL a couple of times during previous forums. That's not really something we want to enable by now in Nova, at least. But we we know we know the hardware. Um, if, for example, that person wants to wants to engage with us about what they would like to have as a use case, I would more than happy to hear about the use case. And one way of engaging with us, as we say, is that, you know, probably the best time to say it, we have the virtual PTG next week and we have the operator hour. So if someone wants to, to, to use some CXL hardware, we say, I, I see he's asking for virtualization stacks. I'm, I'm more, than a, more than happy to hear about the, the use cases and what they would like to have. Well, hopefully we answered your question a little bit. If not, we would love to chat with you more about it. Um, like Savan mentioned, we have the virtual PTG next week and we have the forum and the Open Infra Summit coming up in June, which I will talk a little bit more about in a moment here. Um, I don't think we have any more questions for the audience. Was there any other things that any of you uh, wonderful panelists wanted to mention today before we close out. Thanks for moderating this, Kendall. You've done a great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for um, coming today. Huge, huge thank you to Sylvan and Carlos and Rajat and Jay for giving us the lowdown on Antelope today. And thank you to the audience for asking some questions. And hopefully we'll get more and see more involvement in the future. So um, I think we have a couple slides for you with information about the summit coming up. Um, so please don't forget to join us June 13th through 15th for the Open Infra Summit in Vancouver. Registration is currently live and prices will go up on May 5th. So make sure to register before then. Um, we have a lot of excellent content in store and the CFP for the forum is actually still open. So if there are topics like um, CXL or anything else that came up today, please get those submitted by uh, it's like mid to late April. So you still have a little bit of time, um, but we have a lot of awesome members joining us there and participating, um, telling us about their use cases. Uh, I just hope to see you there. <laughs> um, and if you're interested in being a sponsor of the event, please contact Jimmy at openinfra.dev. Um, then obviously we have the, the project teams gathering. So it might've gotten a little fuzzy because we jumped back and forth, but we are having a virtual project teams gathering next week 
March 27th through 31st. Registration is free and we would love to see you there. We have over 35 teams participating, I think, or maybe exactly 35 teams. Um, and they are everyone from Starling X and Kata to specific OpenStack services like Nova and Cinder and Ironic and Manila, like you all heard from today, and many, many more. So please um, register and join us there next week. And then even more exciting, <laughs> we will have um, the in-person PTG during the Open Infrastructure Summit. And registration for the PTG for that is included within the summit. So when prices go up May 5th, it goes up for everything. Um, so April 6th, in two weeks, the week after the PTG, we will have our next Open Infra Live episode on large scale op um, operations, a deep dive on Society General. So please join us for that. And remember that if you have an idea for a future episode, we want to hear from you. Please submit your ideas to ideas.openinfo.live. And hopefully we'll see you on a future show here. And finally, I would really like to thank the Open Infra Foundation members again, because we couldn't host shows like this without you. We wouldn't have awesome OpenStack releases and releases of all of our other amazing Open Infra projects without you. If your organization would like to join the Open Infra Foundation, take a look at openinfra.dev slash join. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Open Infra Live. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.